All right. Great. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, and good afternoon, all folks uh, there. I mean, uh, for now, it's already gone, so it's an early morning for me. Uh, and I appreciate uh, Sigma Howard uh, giving me the chance to present this uh, research work over um, online. Um, so, um, this work focused on uh, human interest failure assessment during uh, early design. Uh, so, my PhD student, uh, Salman Ahmed, is working on this. My colleagues, Professor Irma Tumor and Professor Robert Stone. So, we are um, faculty members in the Oregon State University of Mechanical Engineering. Um, so, what I will be Talking about the motivation is basically how we can um, demand um, assessment of that particular uh, human and the machinery failure. So, as we all know, uh, human failures are the root causes of most of the accidents. The staggering number, like 60 to 80 percent of most of the industrial accidents, are due to accidents. And after the human failures, complex systems such as nuclear power plant operation, aviation, and even healthcare. Um, so, and human failures is not really um, easy to understand and easy to comprehend because they 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 are, they are very complex in terms of it can be a simple single event or cascading multiple events um, that may have some cognitive and uh, physical factors. Um, and as we all know, slips, lapses, mistakes, and violations are part of the causes of how they develop throughout the system. It's an interesting phenomenon. And what happens uh, in most of the cases, uh, we engineers ultimately blame humans as being the root causes of problems. But interestingly, um, most of these problems are happening because of preventable errors, which are system systems or indicators of design flaws. So they are often created in the system, and we have this them let the users interact with the product or the machinery, right? So the focus of this work, uh, we propose looking for human machine interactions, right? Uh, if we understand how they are interacting with the machinery, we can. Uh, um, they pinpoint these poor design or these efforts, uh, which are mostly called technical uh, issues that lead to accidents and loss of human performance. Uh, unfortunately, uh, most of the conventional failure analysis uh, in domain uh, underemphasize the human factors aspect during the assessment. Um, and failures due to human machine interaction often with that case, uh, or not. Uh, paid a lot of attention to uh, the design process. So, one example, uh, they uh, frequently use failure analysis, uh, effect analysis, that FNA uh, does not consider the failures due to human machine interactions. And many other FMEA based uh, failure assessment don't really consider the human factors issues. So in this study, we're trying to formulate a combined failure analysis that integrate both the machine failure as well as the human induced failure. So you can think about this as a combined analysis that brings how the machinery fails, how the humans are creating uh, errors, finally this all combined and causes an accident. So our methodology um, focuses on FFEM, which is a function failure design method. And the SHARPA, which is systematic human error reduction and prediction approach. Um, so basically considering um, two aspects, the machinery and the human failure um, in complex systems. So FFDM is basically uh, an approach coupling failure analysis with product design during conceptual stage. So this is one important focus of our work, having something early in the design phase. Um, and the FFTM is built on the function failure method. I'll just uh, introduce it for a second. Uh, and it extract, extracts potential failure mode from knowledge based history failure. 
Um, so basically, a very high level overview of the FFPM uh, is it basically relates functions and figures and components um, to a metric. So there are two different sort of metric uh, operations, function component metrics, failure component metrics, and function failure metrics. Um, the data that is uh, found in these metrics is coming from accident analysis, previously done accident analysis. Uh, most of this work has been done in aviation. Um, the shampoo, on the other hand, it's a psychology-based approach, uh, and it's based on the hierarchical task analysis, uh, conjecture the human uh, error taxonomy. Um, so the goal is here to identify what tasks, subtasks, have uh, higher probability of causing human errors, and this uh, conventional shampoo does that. Eight steps, it starts with hierarchical task analysis, test with issue, and so on. So our approach is here to use some computational methods, uh, such as digital human modeling. So basically, uh, what we can do with digital human modeling, we can you can think of digital human models as a computer-aided model of human beings inserted in a computational or virtual environment. So these models have the capability of visualizing the human um, uh, body as well as math and science, which means the mechanics and ergonomics aspects of uh, humans. So the idea here create scenario, failure scenarios, using these digital dummies early in the design phase. Uh, because the type of model, uh, which I just introduced, the systematic error reduction model, requires actual users go through the uh, scenarios, which could be really costly and, and not feasible in many cases. Uh, so our methodology has basically five steps, combining FFPM approach and Sherpa. Uh, and then focus on identifying couple functions where the human machine interaction occur and perform combined failure um, analysis. So um, again, when I refer to metrics operations in FFDM, so basically we have two met matrices. Um, the very first one is the function component matrix, which shows uh, some of the function of the to the components. And in this case, I will introduce an example of a rubber craft engine failure scenario, which includes U1 to P24, different functions and components associated with this rubber craft. Um, and the numbers there are 0 and 1 show, for example, if I go E1 in, in EC metric, a change get function, how it affect or how many failures, component failures are, are estimated to change as function. And similarly, we have failure component metrics. Now we are looking for how these failures occur, um, the components, and then we have function failure metrics. So basically, how these functions affect failure modes. And then, um, depending on the accident recreation, um, um, designers or engineers fill these numbers so they associate functions, component, and ultimately function failures. Um, and in the Sharpa case, um, this is a case study, uh, another sample case study showing landing an aircraft, um, and then the, and, and some of the tests the pilot needs to go through. And again, this is the functional breakdown of uh, preparing uh, just a landing aircraft test scenario. And on the right hand side, you can see the error mode analysis associated with the functional um, um, breakdown of the tests, as well as probabilities and critical which is um, potential of failure. And both probability and criticality are represented as both high and medium uh, levels. Here you see M is a medium represent medium on the probability and criticality, and H is a high level uh, probability of failure. And again, these uh, tables are filled by um, uh, engineers. So the idea is basically going back, we have a one machine failure um, analysis or machine failure method, and as well as human failure method uh, for failure analysis. 
Then we look for common functionality. So basically, E1, Q, and E2, 3 coming from the lending operation, but focusing on the component aspect. Uh, and the tasks are coming from typology study for the HPA or pilots uh, initiate uh, landing test. So they would be pilots start um, you know, pressing buttons to reduce the airspeed, and the airspeed uh, re requires regulating the liquid. So that's how the common tasks are uh, here. And the goal is here uh, to quantify. So basically, we use the failure of uh, function and error of test functions. They focus on number of components, failure types, and occurrences on the FSDM and error mode occurrence and severity on the Sherpa. And those numbers again are come from the FSDM metrics and the Sherpa uh, metrics. And here's a very quick summary of uh, what the goal of uh, this combined approach is. So for example, if I focus on function, regulate get function, I have only one component associated with this function that make was a failure. And I have the uh, failure type and a core occurrence as two, and the severity is five. Again, the scaling here, zero to 10. So this is a medium level severity, it's, which is five. But if you look at the test C point B coming from Sherpa analysis, uh, severity is nine, which is a high uh, level of uh, failure probability is associated in this test. Ultimately, the goal is uh, he developed this uh, a larger study. Um, so this is just an example of a study. So we can see the distribution of machine and uh, human failure uh, uh, modes, and we can see the differences between which component, which component, not human, human component causing failure. Uh, so. This this is uh, our first approach. We introduce um, this uh, max failure analysis, and ultimately we are trying to assess if we can uh, derive much meaningful information about how humans uh, are causing failures within a complex system, or uh, the opposite way of how design you know design flaws in the systems are triggering the human failures. We can see which part are dominant and. Understanding this can help engineers or designers to improve both mechanical aspects and how the humans are interacting uh, with the with design environment. And also, we can introduce uh, some uh, human factors into design guidelines to provide solutions. Um, and again, um, we did fully integrate the uh, human modeling, digital human modeling tools. We just use it. For the small portion of a landing aircraft test, obviously this study requires uh, validation. Um, and we only use um, the scenarios that we can get there uh, from the study, so we don't have a very large complex scenario. So these are the future works. But this, this kind of proof of concept uh, study shows us we can relate um, um, digital human modeling early in the design phase to run um, um, machine failure and human failure analysis to see uh, which one are more in a, in a, in a, in a um, contemporary system. Um, and our current future work also includes recreating these uh, failure analysis basically through a virtual reality type approach instead of um, collecting these actual behavior scenarios in which aircrafts are complex systems, you may run uh, these scenarios uh, to virtual real models, and we can generate FFDM and Sharpa analysis without really having, uh, or without really having actual full prototypes or actual, uh, actual complex systems. Um, so this is uh, basically the uh, end of my presentation. Uh, um, thank you very much uh, for listening, and I appreciate uh, any questions or comments.